love the smell of Chevy in the morning, along with my first cigarette and a nice cold Pepsi in a can. First thing in the morning. But fumes, especially when you first start up your vehicle, if they're to the point where you're starting to see a purple dinosaur and the car you just passed turned out to be an ambulance with its flashing lights on, then yeah, you should really take a look at your purge canister or charcoal canister. And there's another name for the device as well. I've heard of people calling it, what the hell is that thing? Well, today I'm going to discuss a little bit about it. So, when you start up your engine, your engine is going to run briefly off of the fumes that is inside that canister. And what it usually does is once it burns itself off, you know, you're back to running off your fuel pump. Your fuel pump will direct fuel into the engine, and then when you shut your car off again, you know, you're going to have the fumes backdraft back into the canister. So, the Evaporative Emission Control System, EECS, is designed to trap vapors from the carburetor or throttle body unit, if you have fuel injection, and from the fuel tank, and store it into a purge canister or charcoal canister. There's many names for it, doesn't matter. And what it does is when the engine is not running, it'll st store all these fumes into this canister. Then when the engine is running, you go and start up your car, your engine is going to be burning off. Everything from the purge canister is going to be drawn into the intake, and then that's going to burn itself off. Then, of course, your fuel pump is going to take over, and then your engine's going to keep running, right? If this system is malfunctioning, you're going to notice fumes. A lot of people do not even know about this, but there is a, a filter on the bottom of these canisters. Some didn't come with one, and some did. Early models did have a filter. This guy here has a filter underneath the canister. A lot of these emission system components, especially with the purge canister, if you're dealing with a late model vehicle that has the computer command control, the ECM, which it was known as in the early 80s and 90s, it is controlled by the computer. So if you get a, a big whiff of fumes in the morning, there's a good chance that this component is not functioning properly, and there could be a few problems that could arise with it, like vacuum hoses, for example, could cause this, or the filter itself. So we're going to take a look here now, diagnose the issue, and fix that issue. First, I'm going to show you how to remove this unit from the vehicle. Okay, so taking a look at our purge canister now. It is labeled. Here we got tank and carb. And it means just that. On this side, it is labeled carb. And it goes to exactly that. This hose goes directly to the carburetor. You must inspect these vacuum hoses. They must be in good shape. If you have a split in your hose or if the hose isn't even connected to the carburetor, you're going to have fumes. Okay? You've got to make sure that these vacuum hoses are in good shape. So like I say, it goes directly into the carburetor. Very simple hose. It's a 3 8 inch diameter hose. Same with standard fuel injection hose. You know, 3 8 is typical size. Then we got another labeled source on our purge tank, purge canister. And it is labeled tank. And it takes a nice long journey all the way down. All the way down. Right to the fuel tank. You can see it runs underneath the steering shaft, it runs alongside and along the frame rails, and it takes a nice long journey all the way to the fuel tank. Very straightforward. So you want to make sure that your hoses are in good shape. So, these hoses are not in that bad of condition. They are still relatively fairly decent looking. There's no cracks in it. So once you've uh, looked over your hoses and decided that your hoses are fine, you can go ahead and proceed to removing your canister. Another thing too that will cause fumes. When you get your canister out of here, you can't physically inspect the canister while it is sitting in the vehicle. It is very hard to diagnose problems with the canister while it's just sitting there like this in this little corner. 
So once you get your canister out, you want to is carefully inspect your canister, making sure that there's no cracks inside the canister itself. If the canister is busted, this is where your fumes are coming from. So you want to make sure that your canister is in good shape. You cannot physically look at the canister from this angle of the vehicle where, where it is sitting currently and say that the canister is fine. No, it's not. You have to get this canister out of here. You got to disconnect your vacuum hoses, label them, make sure you don't get these confused because you don't want them backwards. So get your canister out of there, physically look at it, inspect it carefully, clean it up because there's a good chance it's covered in oil and grease and whatever else. So clean it up, inspect the canister, and make sure that it is in good condition. Okay, so removal is very straightforward. Get yourself a pair of uh, channel lock pliers or any sort of pliers to remove the hoses. There's a good chance that there's these hoses haven't been removed in quite some time, so uh, you'll have to grasp the hose with your pliers and just move it around a bit just to break off that little bit of grease and gunk and whatever else, and then pull it off, just like that. Take yourself a pair of masking tape now, and mask it. Put a piece of masking tape around the hose, and label T for tank, and the, uh, do the same for the other one, label C for carb. That's all you gotta do. You don't wanna get these guys confused. Now, some vacuum hoses here, like this guy for example, you'll notice that it has a different style of end on it. Um, so you really can't get these guys confused. Notice that this one has a wider end, and this one just has a, you know, standard end on it, like it's just been cut off. Well, this guy here has got a different um, flare on the end of it, so really you can't get this guy confused, but your car might not have this, so just keep that in mind. And there you have it. I'm not going to label these guys here because, like I said before, different style, right? Like, but like I say, your car might not have this. I'm uh, quite astonished to see something like this because I, my 85 doesn't have it, nor does the Buick. So something tells me that these are the original vacuum hoses. Um, so like I say, when you take a look at your purge canister and you notice that, you know, your hose like this is identical to the hose like this, you know, you might want to label these just to make sure, you know, just so you don't get them confused. So, at least I know this guy here is the carb, and this guy here is the t to the fuel tank. I'm going to leave those alone. I'm not going to label them. I'm going to set them aside. Next, what you're going to want to do is grab yourself an extension. Grab a few of them. Grab uh, two of them if you have them. And a ratchet. We're going to get this puppy out of here now. How do you suppose that got in there? Okay, so what you're going to need here is a 10 millimeter socket, a few extensions, and a ratchet. Now what you're going to want to do is take some WD-40 fluid film, whatever your preference is, doesn't matter. Some penetrating oil is what you will need here. Just give the bolts a quick spray. You got to remember, these bolts are attached with body clips so you have to remember body clips they break so don't go thinking that you're Mike Tyson and that you can twist every bolt off without having to use any petroleum based lubricants whatsoever don't go ripping and tearing like a bull through a china shop and don't go ripping and tearing like it's your ex-wife okay anyway you get the idea just take it easy, go slow at it, because we all know these little body clips, especially the small ones. If they're rusted, or even if you look at them funny, they're going to break on you. So now I'm going to take my extension with 10 millimeter socket, and we're going to go and loosen this puppy off. You will notice that they aren't very tight, and if it takes more than 10 turns to loosen it off, there's a good chance that the clip is broken and it is turning on you. And if that be the case, well, take your time with it. There you go. A quick spray of WD-40 or fluid film or whatever your favorite penetrating oil is, it saves you in the long run. Just like that. Okay, so with the two bolts unfastened, 
you can remove your purge canister from the vehicle. And it is, it is exactly that. It's a, they call it a charcoal canister. Well, it's filled with charcoal. Anyway, there's your filter. Yeah, if your filter looks like that, uh, it's definitely got to come out of there and got to be replaced. And it's about a buck ninety-nine plus tax for a brand new one. So when you get your purge canister out, you're going to want to make sure to inspect the canister and make sure that there is no cracks or any other damage to it. And as we can see, this guy is in fantastic condition. There's no cracks or anything. It's not busted, so we know that that's fine. But we know that the filter on the bottom of the canister isn't. So the job of the charcoal canister or purge canister is to purge fumes that is drawn in from the tank and the carburetor and then purge it back into the intake system and if we have bad hoses or if the hoses are mixed up well then you have yourself an issue you're going to either experience uh, poor drivability uh, engine hard to start, strong fuel odor is definitely a big one, stalling, your engine could stall a lot because of this, um, so inspect the vacuum hoses. Not so much the filter itself will cause engine stalling, but you might get a light fuel odor, especially when you start up the vehicle first thing in the morning, you might get that odd whiff, but if you have real strong fuel odor, you're going to want to check your canister, make sure it's not broken or cracked, and you're going to want to inspect your lines going to the tank and to the carburetor or a throttle body unit if applicable. So what you're going to want to do is flip the unit upside down and grasp the filter or what's left of it. Just lift it up like this. Okay? And then just pop it out. That's all there is to it. $1.99 plus tax at your local auto parts store. Okay. You got to replace these. A lot of people don't even remember that there was such a thing that existed. But yes, there is a filter on the bottom of the canister and it has to be replaced. Okay, so the installation of your new filter. I don't have one in stock. So I'm just going to use this old one as an example for you guys. Um, so we don't leave this video on a cliffhanger. The installation of your new filter is basically the same. You're going to want to make sure that it is tucked in under the lip of the purge canister or charcoal canister. Just like so. You want to make sure it's in there evenly. You don't want it overlapping like this. That's no good to you. So you want to make sure it's in there nice and even. Just like so. be running to the store to get a new one just not today you know basically that your new filter is going to be a lot easier to work with than the old one of course the old one I'm not going to be able to get back in there to sit nice and pretty but all you have to remember is with your new one is that just make sure that it is under each lip of the purge canister and that it's nice and uniform and even and that it's not like that see what I'm saying Make sure that it is tucked in nice and neat, and away you go.